what's going on guys kalamazi here i'm finally getting over sick and with that being said the actual website and spreadsheet updates that everyone's been asking for are indeed now live i've been wanting to get to this and make this video for probably about a week and a half two weeks now and the more i got into the website there were a few little things i thought i had done but need a little bit more tweaking here and there and the same goes for the actual spreadsheet but with that all being said the spreadsheet and website haven't been updated there have been a few changes and things i've added to them so i wanted to go over them today and also discuss a few things changes to the spreadsheet really how bosses have changed a little bit and really just go from there now if you guys didn't notice we did indeed break 50,000 subs in the channel which is actually insane i really really truly do appreciate the support guys so much i don't get anything for it but it's been a goal of mine for a long time so i really truly do appreciate it with that being said uh 60 70 80 100k that'd be, that'd be pretty cool but uh nah i really appreciate it guys if you aren't subbed to the channel feel free to uh maybe i don't know consider subbing i really appreciate the support but regardless let's get into the actual spreadsheet and website updates now uh, warning ahead that's gonna be a bit of a flashbang i'm sorry here we go so the actual spreadsheet now i've updated a handful of things here starting off with the first tab being sanctum of domination now there are still links to all the heroic testing mythic testing and by the way i'll have a link to all these like the spreadsheet and the website down below uh it'll all be on there in the video description and or maybe comments as well now there have been a handful of bosses i should probably change this shouldn't i there have been a handful of bosses that have actually changed uh tuning wise even mechanically over the past couple of weeks so i went through and changed the recommended specs here based off of that and also really just based off of what ended up being good the terror group still demonology i have the jailer destruction the nine destruction demonology now we actually had affliction listed here early on and affliction has been gaining a little ground i will admit over the past few weeks mainly being around decaying soul satchel the warlock legendary but on certain fights you can take advantage of that like on painsmith for example with orbs or with the spike balls on remnant with orb spawning getting a pi during that and just cranking everything down with the multiplicative haystacking and things like that but for the most part destro and demo have been the go-to for the nine to a similar extent remnant of nerzul now this was actually a big destruction fight early on but the orb health was nerfed by i think 60 percent or something a, a crazy amount mythic orbs have less health than heroic orbs which is very odd so i think this fight has shifted a lot to being more of a demonology based fight i wasn't in for our first kill i was brought in last week and we one shot it i played demonology and it felt fine on the fight the orbs die really fast you're not even going to get a full havoc window off on them unless you're just said unless your raid lead just says hey cleave on them two people and go from there so you can still play Destro on it but i do think demonology has gained a lot of ground on remnant which is sort of what we felt it would be even before the actual raid went live now to a similar extent soul render dormazane affliction has actually gained a lot of ground on this fight i should have a warcraft logs tab up here af is the best overall performing spec on this fight as far as pure damage is concerned similar to how windwalker monk was very good in the race to world first and with you know the world first race still going on or i guess the hall of fame race going on with their aoe bone dust brew affliction warlock is very good on this fight should change this too i don't know how i'm gonna do this actually but playing decaying soul satchel the night fey legendary and playing so the seeds playing writhe in agony I'm, i probably will change talents here in a second too as well but very very strong here if you actually let your warlocks pad on the fight or pad kill the actual ads typically they had like a windwalker monk and one other person assigned to killing them but aflocks can put out insane overall damage here now boss damage wise not the best but it's still relevant and worth mentioning otherwise destro and demore are both still fine here giving a lot of two target cleave or i guess single target s cleave if you're playing demonology also just like how remnant was nerfed painsmith this week was also nerfed the actual ads coming out of phase two back in the phase one the spiked orbs and the actual boss health were nerfed by 10 percent in addition to adding a hole in the spiked wall so while you still can play destruction in this fight and i think it's probably still the best prog spec demonology gained even more ground because the orbs and the actual like ads coming out of phase two are less relevant just like the other fights that have been nerfed this raid it's very odd there are a lot of single target like patchwork-esque bosses hidden in these like cleave based fights like painsmith like soul render like remnant like fate scribe which we'll get to in a minute here so i think demos gained a lot of ground on this fight playing wilford's normal demonology build I wouldn't fault you for playing either but destro has definitely lost some value a lot of guilds probably aren't going to be holding dps uh, going from phase one to phase two so destro might not even have three minute cds when you come back into phase one again after the phase two dance is over 
which means uh, no Inferno value and just, yeah. I think Demo gained a lot of ground in this fight here as well. Guardian, single target Demo fight. I had Destro here initially, but just play Demonology on it. You can play whatever you want. The boss dies and we killed it in four pulls on Mythic. The boss is a joke. Fate Scribe has actually been a pretty big Demonology fight. I still have Destro here if you're struggling with tank ads or ads in phase two, but for the most part, Demonology has been the spec that's performed better on this fight. Because once again, similar to Remnant and Painsmith and a handful of other bosses, the nine, it's sort of a patchwork DPS race. You're going to probably end up racing to beat the second set of orbs in the final phase with Lust and just burning the boss down. What's better? Destruction or Demonology? Demonology. Kel'Thuzad, Destruction. Now, we, we weren't sure if the ads... We weren't sure if Shadowburn and Wrath Consumption were going to be working coming out of actual PTR testing into this. They do indeed work. Destro has been the go-to spec for this fight. You're playing Karain with First Strike. You play um, Shadowburn. You actually play Grimoire of Sacrifice at times over Roaring Blaze or Reign of Chaos. All three actually work. It really just depends what you're doing. But you play Sacrifice for a, the consistent interrupts because at times you're going to have to kick an ad across the room. If your pet's over here, He'll try to kick, but it's not going to interrupt. So that's why you see a lot of sacrifice play in this fight. I'm not going to change the talents because it sort of just depends where kick assignments are and things, but you play Destro in this fight. And finally, Savannah's Windrunner, which we weren't really sure on how this is going to work. Demonology. I actually had Destro listed here, but now to be fair, you can play AF. There is some relevancy to AF for as far as phase one wheeling arrow damage is concerned, even phase two on the bridge. But I don't think I know the F. I really don't feel bringing the same single target damage as Demonology does. But with that being said, with gear coming in more and more and these bosses being so incredibly easy early on, I wouldn't fault somebody for playing Destro or AF here. I really wouldn't. But I think Demonology is the actual best choice here, which is what we saw in the race to world first. Now, in addition to all this, a handful of other tabs have indeed been updated. The Sanctum Domination Bist list changed a little bit. We have included Soul Eating Ruby and FNT in here. Now, this varies a little bit. If you want more you know, clarification and context on these, there is a Trinkets tab down here. Sims are still here. Uh, the, I want to touch on briefly the Eradication Destro Sims. It does indeed still sim higher, but similar to how it's been for the last year or so. It might sim a little higher, but people still play Flashover for just, uh, it, it just ease of life uh eradication being annoying a few other things here and there this and that you still play flash over for the most part now i have indeed updated the trinket section this is done i think about a week ago i think the seventh or eighth give or take basically this patch your best equip on use trinkets equip fnt from kelpazod forbidden necromantic tome and on use soul letting ruby now there is one little caveat to that and that where's it at here uh where is it where is it? I know it's here. There we go. Uh, infinitely divisible ooze. This trinket is very, very strong for demonology in single target. It's not very good for Destro, not very good for Aff. But demonology, it's very, very strong because it scales with demonology pet effects and things like that. So very, very strong. For demo, your best single target equip trinket. Infinitely divisible ooze from Plaguefall and on use to be Ruby. Everything else. Destro, Aff, FNT, and Ruby. You might see a bit of like eye play, like the trinket from the eye or some Shattered Orbs Torments, which isn't terrible, but Ruby is going to be the end goal, just like it was before. You see Shattered Orb here being mentioned at a B roll. It's fine. Similar to Eye Trinket being Titanic Ocular Gland. It's fine. You still have Bell listed here because eh, it's Bell, sure. But Ruby being a Changeling. Changeling is actually in a pretty interesting spot because I believe it's for Destro and Demo. Two of the three specs, the Triple Proc, the Haste Crit Versatility or Haste Crit Mastery, Whichever one is not in there. The three proc actually sims higher at 252 than a 259 Mythic Forbidden Necromantic Tome does. So if you get this in your vault as an option and you have a Mythic FNT, but not much else of relevancy in your vault, it might actually be worth taking to see if you can roll the triple effect because you can re-roll it once a day. And if you get it, then technically it does indeed sim better, at least for me. And I've, well, I've heard most people uh, than an FNT. So, hey, if you roll the three proc going into raid, have fun. Your trinket sims about 70 or 80 D. For me, it sims about 70 or 80 DPS higher than an FNT, but that'll vary a lot based on other people's gearing and things like that. IQD still, still listed here as well with a decent grade. It's fine. Doesn't line up amazing with Tyrants. Uh, it's okay for AF, two minute CDs versus three and Demo. It, it's fine. You can make it work. If I have a high one early on and haven't acquired a Ruby and things, it's more than fine. Still a solid trinket. You just need to know that you need to ensure that you're going to be in the setting where you can get the actual stat proc. You're not going to heal somebody. You're not going to give somebody mana. If that is something you can guarantee for the most part, 
this is a very solid trinket as well but ruby it will indeed still be better for consistency now to a similar extent domination shards have been added i added this to the spreadsheet a few days ago on holy blood frost you can click on these tr these links here to go to wowhead and look at them basically what they do general throughput survivability ability damage the actual effect tldr in this you can look more into it here if you want the unholy bonus is still what you want in single target and two plus targets now blood is about the same when it comes to single target and is more consistent it's a dot that goes on your target when you hit it and it will consistently transfer life to you dealing damage and also heal you it, it doesn't there's no rng in that you hit a target it starts siphoning life unholy does seem a tiny bit higher for destro for me but it's basically the same uh for demo and f across the board as blood does in single target the th the thing with unholy though is that it's a bit rng based it might proc at the right time you might get your huge you know 900 primary stat proc during your infernal during your dark soul you might get it when you're doing nothing but casting incinerates and a couple weak chaos bolts so there's rng in it but with it being so close to blood link in in sims in general and all that rng being taken into account i do just as most everybody else still feel that unholy is the best single target option pretty much across the board there has been mention of some guild dropping healers on certain fights and everyone playing blood link and all that and it is a very solid option for a single target if you don't have the unholy helm or shards or whatever but tldr unholy is still really where you want to be legendary wise this just gives you a breakdown where they come from they have the class grades rating grades i changed a few here i added dss and the actual necro lord venthyr ones legendary crafting this talks about what you want to craft them on now there are a few pieces that you can sort of make your own choice on right like i think dss uh demonic's decaying soul satchel i'm sorry is basically on helm or boots not helm sorry uh gloves or boots which they give the same secondary stat distribution and there's none of those from the last two bosses so you can basically just choose whatever you want if you have a higher pair of gloves put it on boots you have a higher pair of boots put it on gloves basically the same thing i did also indeed update soul binds now this is this goes into a bit we go a bit more in depth in this on the website and the videos i put out last week talking about dreamweaver but dreamweaver with dream delver and everything she brings is very very strong affliction single target mythic plus certainly plus has shifted the one to play dreamweaver destructions played dreamweaver pretty much anyways in uh, three plus target we've seen it a bit in single target now demonology is closer because unlike f and destro don't benefit from stamina scaling effects like grove invigoration now Destro and Aff will also get, you know, the mastery bonus, which also affects demonology, but Demo gets mastery and the stamina effect. Now, the big thing here, Dreamweaver does technically sim a little better for demonology, but Dreamweaver requires you to move your soul rot to after your tyrant cast instead of be before it, which is fine, but it also requires you to stand in the actual field of, field of blossoms effect for essentially the full duration. I think it's like, I think it's basically the full duration to actually get value out of it, which if you play demonology and tank of domination that is not ex extremely likely a lot of these bosses are very disruptive compared to previous tiers i feel like and it's you know made demonology a bit of a headache to play so i'm still recommending nia most of the sims or sorry sims uh i guess parse are still playing nia for the most part i think it just works better overall for the actual spec affliction and plus dream Weaver. it's utterly insane the seed spam is truly ridiculous. Now I left destruction as any because Corain has value in plus Nia and Dream Verbal fine. Demonology, I still have Nia here for both the FTS build and the single target build. Now conduits basically the same thing as legendary, wherever they come from, multipliers, uh, mythic plus grades, rating grades. And if you still want, there are F, destruction, and demonology tabs that show, hey, this is where this gear comes from, as far as like this dungeon gearing goes. But for the most part, this is not crazy relevant at this point. So with that being said, the spreadsheet link will be down below. The website has also updated for this. If you guys haven't been, uh, I haven't checked it recently. The most recent video I put up, Mythic Guard in the first ones. So there's been a handful of changes made. Now, if you want to go to the general guides, just hit the actual tabs, bang, bang, bang. It'll pull the guide up from the start for you. If you want to go to two specific sections, let's say you want to go covenants, soul binds, conduits, legendaries, they're all here hitting this will instead bring you right to that section of the actual guide which is very convenient as well so the big thing here starting with af for example at the top we have af demo i'll even pull up destro covenants now i've changed these everything is still the same here you can still interact with them and it'll show what the actual ability is but i've added this section here saying overall your best choice is night fade due to the nature of soul rot and how powerful the interactions are with with cooldowns also mentioning soul shape here now 
typically I'd forego mentioning covenant like abilities like soul shape or um, fleshcraft, but honestly, like soul shape is just in a league of its own and it it's worth mentioning. It does also mention if you don't want to play that, there are other options here as well. But overall, this is consistent across every spec here. Uh, Night Fae is indeed recommended. Soulbinds, I have indeed changed these a bit as well because they've shifted around a bit in 9.1. Plague Divisor. Kevin's Oozling, this is pretty insane. Some abilities have changed and they're, they've are they made, you know, for example, Plague Divisor better for Necrolord than a many or Bonesmith to a similar extent. Affliction, Dreamweaver is mentioned here as well with Field, with Dream Delver. And it basically shows what you want to, or what the relevant abilities do uh, for each actual soul mine. Now, there is a mix of Kyrian, Pelagos, and the robot guy. I forgot his name. I, <laughs> I looked at him earlier, I forgot his name. There's a mix of, of him and Pelagos together, and to a similar extent, and this is for Destro Demo and F, and to a similar extent, there's a mix of like Venthyr for Demonology, playing Theotar versus Nagia. Like you can see for Demo here, I actually left Nagia here. There's some actual mention of Theotar, but I sort of just, uh, I, I didn't really change that until things are a little bit more clear, because number one, there's not a whole lot of Demonology locks that are Venthyr and everything else. I want to get a little more actual information on that, but the relevant points, the big ones that have changed, we know they're good, have been updated. So Affliction, Plague Divisor, Dreamweaver, Demonology, still have Nia here, but Plague Divisor and Destruction, Plague Divisor, and you also have Dreamweaver here as well. Moving on a bit. So conduits, for the most part, have stayed the same. We talked about them before. Bolt, Leer, Malignancy, Rolling, Soul Eater. Same thing for Demo here. They're all basically the same. We should add Soul Eater in here as well, even though it's not relevant for Demonology. But I have added a section here at the bottom of each conduit, and it's this, or I guess, you know, section, whatever. It says your typical potency setup for destruction, for example, is Ashen Remains, Soul Eater, and Duplicitous Havoc. If there is a row in your soul bind that offers a potency choice as a DPS trait in another row, but still in the same tier, I would suggest putting Duplicitous Havoc there, meaning for Dreamweaver, for example. In the second potency slot, I believe it's second potency, you have the option of choosing potency in a non-DPS trait above it that connects to it. So you put typically Duplicitous in there, but if you look towards the center trait, it's a DPS effect, but connected to like a, either a finesse or endurance conduit. But the DPS effect is, I believe it's social butterfly that gives you a versatility increase, which is not as good in single or two target. Obviously you played with Plicitous Havoc, but if you want to play that in single target or whatever, all you have to do is just, just click bang. You're playing soul or you're playing social butterfly instead of Plicitous Havoc in single target. So there's a bit of min max you can do a bit here with it. I don't really know how to add like a whole I don't, it's a bit of an issue adding a whole talent tree to this part of the actual website, but I hope this clarifies enough. This is the same for Destro, for Demo, talking about single target, Born of Blood, Tyrant, Soul, and Carnivorous, Foul Commando. Carnivorous, I think I spelled this wrong, I did need to change that, is more single target based, albeit RNG based, while a Foul Commando gains more in two plus target settings. This also mentioned if you're playing the Carnivorous build, did I spell this wrong? I, think, I don't think I did actually. I'll look back at it. It doesn't matter. Uh, either way, if you're playing the Carnivorous build, like being FTS Red Lash, you want to play the Carnivorous Stalker's Conduit biggest goal all the time. And for AF, it basically just mentions uh, AF should have one. I don't know where it went, but AF should have one. Uh, yeah, I don't know where it went, but I'll fix that too. So, oh, there it is. I need to bump this up. Basically, when you come to the website, this will be here like this. I didn't move it. I, I Listen, I, I swear I know what I'm doing. Either way, Legendary is basically the same here. Uh, I will indeed be adding Decaying Soul Satchel as well. I haven't pushed that update yet, but DSS will be here talking about how strong it is for Affliction in Mythic Plus. Probably won't give a whole lot of mention to it for Demonology and Destruction, mainly because they have better choices in Plus, but regardless, that is there. Now, Talent Breakdown, basically everything is the same here, still interactable, whatever you want to look at. We've added a Domination Shards section to the website. So if you don't have the spreadsheet or are curious as what they do, you can come here, you can interact with them. They all give you, they all say what they do, Sh speed bonus, uh, whatever this thing does. Beck, Jazz, Rev, Core, Cure, Tell, Shard of Ds. I took a lot of resistance not adding a joke in here, but and below it, it also gives what the actual bonus is. Chaos Bane, Blood Link, Winds of Winter. Down here as well, overall Unholy is the best Domination Shard choice for Warlocks. After the Shard buffs, the Blood Bonus is very close and pure single target and offers far more consistency and healing, but not as much potential as Unholy with the right procs and RNG. Unholy also scales in, should be one space there, in two plus target slash AB settings as as blood is purely a single target dot effect. It should be rewarded, but either way, we're learning as we go. So this gives you a breakdown, basically what's good, TLDR, and this is the same across every spec. 
trinket section has also been added now that we have sims done and things are sort of settling it down a little bit similar to the actual spreadsheet we have soul lighting ruby shattered orb necrom necromantic tome excuse me and unbound changeling here i did clarify in here i sort of tried to put them as on use trinkets in the equip based trinkets best on use option ruby harder to acquire but typically best on use option being this outside of fnt's haste crit mastery effect so there's that and everything else is basically the same rotationally this is here filler rotation dot pandemic range the actual guides are here and towards the bottom there are weak wars and things now there's been a lot of questions about uh the actual mythic plus and more so the sanctum tabs here i did indeed go through here and change the recommended specs and talents for bosses now eradication is still here i left it there because it does indeed sim a little better but realistically no one's really playing it i did of the legendaries as well as for example looking at actual soul render dormazane <laughs> the sow the seeds rather than agony build now you can play the single target build here if you want i wouldn't fault you for it it's still strong it's still fine but if you're going to play a single if you're looking for more single target damage demonology is the way to go over affliction and probably destro as well over affliction on this fight and also brings a lot more actual cleave so i might end up removing shadowburn here and a few things give or take but technically they are sort of options in the yellow border here indicates that you can play them but they're not really as strong as the green recommended section here and it's basically the same across the board every single video here when i do actually get the kills up on youtube which i'm trying to do i'm just a little behind on that i will indeed put them here over the actual ptr testing but for the most part that is basically it if, if you want to check out some pretty awesome streamers there's a tab for you there as well but that is pretty much it i might tweak a few little things here and there as far as the mythic plus tab is concerned but we've talked about tyrannical hybrid fortified builds even when it comes to tyrannical weeks as playing as far as aft is concerned i've still played sts and writhe if you want to go more single target based like in theater of pain for example i wouldn't fault you for playing this but uh, sts writhe has really taken over and become a become a pretty strong build as far as affliction is concerned and yeah i think that basically covers everything about the website and spreadsheet update wise uh, up until this point i i don't really think there's anything i had left to do to update for sanctum and or mythic plus at this point now there was indeed some interesting things discovered yesterday or the day before i guess depending when you're watching this about 9.1.5 ptr there are some things that blizzard changed and pushed referencing patch 9.1.5 so obviously we don't know but there might be some ptr builds and or things maybe changing coming over the next few weeks month month and a half two months i don't know we'll see but regardless if those things do indeed change i will be updating the website and spreadsheet accordingly if need be oh i forgot there have also been a handful of questions about these like art uh these picks for the uh, af destro demo i have some ideas for these hopefully in the next month or so give or take they'll be a bit more but if you guys are curious about it uh well know that i do indeed have a, a bit of a plan for them let me know what you guys think about the spreadsheet and website updates in the video description below comments below if you have any questions feel free to ask down there i will indeed be sure to get back to you i didn't show any week of wars or any kind of gameplay here but if you want them they're all you can get them all for free off my twitch and or my discord there are links to both down below twitch if you want to swing by hang out to ask any questions anytime i stream five to six days a week feel free to do so once again with all the things said i want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons you guys thank you so much for support i really truly indeed do appreciate it if you're interested in supporting there should be a link somewhere up here or down below somewhere if you want to take a look at that with all that being said if you guys want to see more wild content and help for the channel be sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons below it helps out a ton thanks so much guys and i'll catch you all again soon on stream peace